Okay, welcome back. Friday practice is over. Normally, I don't always do videos about Friday practice, only really if it's absolutely necessary. And this practice was pretty interesting, so I think that warrants it. Also, there was a lot of stuff that came out that really does affect Formula One as a whole. So first off, pra free practice one, not a lot happened. The biggest thing for Friday is there was no weather. Just to, like I said last video, um, Spa is really one of those places where you only know until it's actually raining if it's going to rain. So, but the biggest thing out, Max Verstappen fastest, all of these times were not rep representative. They didn't, nobody really ran um, a quali kind of uh, session. So it was all pretty long runs, lots of flows of his paint. Lots of people bringing low downforce upgrades to the track. Well, not necessarily upgrades, at least packages. You saw Red Bull brought back the shotguns that are alongside the top. Mercedes got a, a rid of a bunch of winglets along the halo, which I don't think I've ever seen them do before. And then just your regular kind of uh, tiny wings and adjustments throughout. The biggest thing from FP1 though, as far as drivers is concerned, Esteban Ocon got no running. You can see on this screen here, he got one lap of which was an out lap. He had a water issue and they had the car split in half basically through most of it. The only other thing here is, where's the Haas? Haas are here. They're experimenting with two different setups and in FP2, they are actually quite quick, especially Kevin Magnussen who is running a high downforce. So he was really fast in the middle sector but kind of slow in the first sector. And this track is all about that, uh, those straights. It's all about that part of the track. That's why it's very popular to take penalties here because it's easy to pass. And that is a very, very fast part of the track. You see Lando Norris last year took a high downforce uh, package and end up not doing well. So if they end up going with a high downforce, I think they'll do really well in qualifying, but in the race, they'll just get eaten up. Okay, let's go through. So this is all the stuff that they, this is their usual since uh, Austria where they made those uh, changes that were very successful at stopping people from doing sort of naughty things and using the track. So they did the same thing here as they did in Silverstone, as they did in Hungary. Uh, I got a pretty good example of this one. This is Oscar Piastri. Uh, this is actually on his flying lap in FP2. And you can see him go off track there. There's two things from this. One, you can see the black lines here where they've painted over the old white line and they've scrunched that up. They've just made it so that there isn't a car width there. I mean, that's not that big of a deal. It's not that far different. It just means they don't have to police that anymore. He went off track. He actually lost time. And then he pulled a bunch of gravel back onto the track. I think you'll see that a lot this weekend, especially in qualifying where they might have the chance to actually clean it up. I doubt they'll throw a yellow flag to clean up gravel during the race. And I think overall for me, I'm glad that they're doing this. How messed up is it that this painting and moving little bits here and there was all they had to do to really fix this problem. And we've been going through this for like two or three years now. Okay, so that's uh, that's that. This also shows off a second thing that I really, really want to talk about, and we're gonna have, there's gonna be something about it. See all that stuff coming off of there? Now, some of that's dust, some of it's actually tire squealing, but a lot of it is plank wear. Plank wear seems very high here. These are the lowest we've had these cars in a very, very long time, even lower than last year, because they've got the ground effects under control now and they know how to run their car without too much porpoising. Remember that word porpoising? They like to use that word, it was just bumpiness on the straights. So they've gotten really good at that now. So the cars are super low. So if you run off here when you're not supposed to, you were gonna wear your plank. And if you look at uh, this clip, this is Lewis Hamilton. Lewis Hamilton coming down the straights here. This is after the shambi, after you come back down the hill. Look at his head. Bum, 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 bum. Now it doesn't see, it seems like overall the suspension is able to handle this kind of porpoising again, but I think more the plank wear because it's not the fronts bouncing anymore. It's the rear that really bounces a lot. And the plank wear through all of these, you can see all, especially going up uh, Eau Rouge, going up through Radion Eau Rouge, they were heavy, 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 heavy plank wear. In fact, Martin Brundle was out there out on the track and he was commenting on how it was it was aerated into the air. It was really dusty around because the planks were being worn so much. Now the teams have sensors and they're able to come back in and they replace the planks every time they go out. So they get a good idea of how much it is wearing down. They're not doing race runs. So like if you're looking at the amount of laps they're doing here, 23, 26 is the most there from Max. So like they're not doing full race runs. 
So the real issue is that they really won't know once the fuel goes down how much wear you're going to have through a high fuel. And it's really going to matter, matter on the weather, tire temps, how much people are pushing, traffic, a whole bunch of stuff that they're not going to be able to really tell by the basis of these cars. So uh, if I had to take a wild guess, I would say we might get into this, which is uh, when Lewis and... Was it Leclerc? Yeah, Lewis and Leclerc, who were disqualified from the Austin race last year, which is also another place that is, it has a lot of high downforce, high, or er, high speed, high downforce corners, which Spa does have as well. And they measured these planks. Now, this hadn't happened in a really long time. A minimum thickness of nine millimeters would be accepted due to wear. So it was really in the back ends right here where they found it wore too much and they disqualified them. So. If we don't see this this weekend, I will be actually kind of surprised. And I wrote down these notes for myself because um, a lot of the time what they do is they do spot checking. They're, they say that after a race, there is not enough time to check every car for everything. They do certain things. They do tests on everything. Like they'll always do a fuel test. They'll always do an oil test. And then they do spot checks on certain cars. They will pull in two to four where they pull in the cars and they took a look at them and they give them a, a proper shakedown. The main thing is they'll only pull a couple cars out because they just don't have enough time. If you know Formula One, the turnaround to get these cars, uh, there was a documentary, I think F1 actually, these guys did a piece on it, on how much, uh, they call it the moving circus because it, it is crazy to watch how, how they're able to tear down because they take all this stuff with them, the garages, the, the places that they stay, they sleep, their catering, all that kind of stuff that follows the circus along. And the, the speed at which they're able to change that over is quite good. But you can understand that these, these cars get, sh get flown um, from place to place, as well as if they need upgrades and stuff. Sometimes if you have a week break, they'll fly them back to the factory and do stuff like that. So interrupting all the teams by making them wait for their car and but they had to turn them around really quickly the thing about this race is though we are on summer break so you have all the time in the world nobody's really going to care if they're a day late for a three to four week break so if i was the fia i would check every friggin car all of them every single one um it would probably be bad for the sport to see a whole grid get disqualified <laughs> if there were problems but i mean that's what i would do personally so this is Ma the main ones to point out here are anybody using a previously used on four. So you he see Yuki Sonona, you see Red Bull. So it's Mac and Max and Yuki, Yuki taking penalties. Yuki's taking a 60 place grid penalty. That's almost as much as McLaren had years ago where they had 70 between two people. Um, this is just one guy. He's taking everything you possibly can and he's going to start at the back of the grid. In fact, I'm pretty sure he's starting in Hungary. <laughs> it's so far back. It's crazy. But Max, like I said uh, last video, I didn't think he'd take them all because, and it says a lot that they're not taking them all. If they took them all with Max, who's, they're all fighting for constructor and driver championships now because because McLaren has really caught up. If they took them all, they thought he could probably finish, finish the race in a reasonable spot from 20th or 19th, I suppose, because Yugi will be behind him, but, and he'll be able to get by everybody. Obviously, Perez doesn't count. Daniel doesn't count because they'll just let them by. So really, it would be kind of like an effective 17th or so. And he'd be able to get in deep into the points enough that it wouldn't affect the constructor or the driver champion. Because they don't want to have to do this again for some of the other components that are also wearing out because they lost that, lost that whole ICE engine from Canada. So what this says is that we're not fast enough. We can't do that. We are not fast enough around this track. At least we don't think we are in order to do that giant leap. What we can do is probably, if we qualify well, we can do an 11th or maybe a 12th or maybe a 13th if the McLarens are faster than us, which looks like the case. So it says a lot that they they don't, it, it's, it's, a, it's a hammered down. It doesn't matter what they're saying out loud, it means nothing. What they're saying in the championship is that we don't think we're fast. It doesn't matter what they say, oh, well, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. You didn't take them all and you didn't take them all, so you're not fast enough. And that says heaps about what they think about the car. So that's those two there. Uh, up next, this is what we're gonna see. This is F3. This is what it looked like 
leading up, the, this picture was the last little bit before. So as they were coming around here, this is where you go into the chicane before you start your lap. These, all, these are all the people looking to start their lap. Now in Formula 1, you have one less cars. There's like 30 cars in Formula 3, so it's a bit of a hectic time. But the other thing is uh, these guys aren't as experienced. They don't know how to space their cars out. They don't really, the teams aren't experienced. They're smaller. The communication is worse, all that kind of stuff. But this is what it looked like in the last 20 seconds to try to go and do your lap. Everybody was on top of each other. And because Spa is such a long lap, you're gonna see this happen. It's strange that it's a larger track, but you bunch up more. It's because people cannot do their outlaps other than a slow pace. We were seeing, I think my notes were, normally the lap is 142, 143 if you're going really fast. My notes say 330 for a lap. So, uh, so like pretty much twice as much almost. And no, that is twice as much, twice as much as a regular lap time they're going around. So everybody's just crawling around the whole lap. Now there's lots of places to get out of the way at Spa. It's quite a big track, but I think we're gonna see this in qualifying. Uh, look for this kind of stuff, especially in Q1, where there's too many people on track. You're going to see, uh, I, if we don't see penalties, I would be very, very surprised. I'm actually gonna pull this to the end because it's not as important as some other stuff. Um, this is Max and GP. This was circulating around really funny and this is a lot of this was uh, Max explaining people were saying that uh, GP was Max Max explaining to Max It's funny and all but I think what this is is a really relaxed conversation Look at their body language. We obviously don't know what they're saying, but look at their body language. They're leaning. They're both not screaming uh, uh, GP's very he's like expressioning really hard but you look at max's feet he's, he's at legs are crossed gp's also and, and it, i think they're actually talking about somebody else because they're, they're pointing away like that but this doesn't there's been a lot of stuff lately about max and gp not getting along max being nasty over the radio and stuff like that but this doesn't look like a pair of people who don't get along this looks like two people pretty passionate about whatever having some talking points to each other and they really don't look like they're angry with each other at all. So I think a lot of that kind of stuff is overblown. So Bruno Famine, if anybody doesn't know, runs the Alpine team from the pit wall. He is the team principal. Uh, he also fired pretty much everybody in the past year. I don't know if there really was anybody left, um, but he has also been axed. We know we know that uh, Flavio Biratori has recently come on as an advisor, and I think that is coming from higher up and I think he's gonna gut the whole thing. And the first thing to go is Bruno Femin. Now, rumors are that, I don't know if I have the name here. Oliver Oaks, here we go. Oliver Oaks is in line to emplace the Frenchman. That's the rumor anyway. Uh, he runs the high-tech team in F2. And if you know the high-tech team, he's really built up that team. He has a lot of experience and you see that high-tech team do really well when they're not Prima and they're not Art. So, I mean, like high-tech is really, really good. Hopefully, Alpine will continue to be good, but from what I've seen, it's not a good thing to do this kind of stuff. So, um, not really a good look. Renault to leave as a power unit manufacturer. So this is the rumor, and this is a heavy rumor. We see um, Racing 365 and this Speed Cafe, which are ones that are, again, they're not my favorite publications, but like when it's this prominent in the media, it, it sounds like it's probably gonna happen. And with the shakeup of Bruno, Bruno Famine, that makes a lot of sense. He's taking a back seat to go and uh, run the rest of the sporting regulations. So they're not firing him. He's actually getting a promotion from running an F1 team to running all the sporting teams, really conching trading on WEC and Le Mans and stuff like that. So he's getting a sort of a promotion. So they didn't really fire him, but why would you pull out your Renault guy out of the Renault team? Oh, it's probably because you're not gonna be Renault anymore. You're only gonna be Alpine in name only. It's gonna be a, a customer team where they run with Mercedes engines. And I don't have the publication up here, but it looks like that's what uh, Flavio Briatore is there to do, to be a wheeler and dealer to the old guard and see if he can get a Mercedes engine, which would be awful because that would mean more than half of the grid would be, I hope they say no, uh, more than half the grid would be powered by Mercedes, which one puts a strain on Mercedes and two means that Toto is in the pocket of pretty much 
everybody on the friggin' grid, which would be pretty bad. I hope they say no, because that means the low, if they say no, and Renault does pull out their engine, engine manufacturer with the least amount of supply has to take up that offer, has to. I don't mean like optional, like, oh, we don't really want to. They have to, which means that Honda would have to power, which is hilarious because Renault is actually linked with Nissan and has been for many years. So to be powered by a Honda engine would be just, oh, that would be a media nightmare in Japan. It would be awful for the Renault group. And the last thing is Esteban Ocon moving to Haas. We all knew this was gonna happen. Uh, it was funny to hear from him because he's, very critical of the Alpine outfit and his departure, considering he still has to drive with them. I mean, I don't know. He says that they didn't listen to him. They didn't listen to Gasly. They didn't listen to Alonso. They didn't listen to um, Ricardo. They didn't listen to anybody about the problems with the car. And you really saw Alpine move from a team like Esteban won for them. In, at, at Hungary a few years ago uh, to a team where they forgot to go out and set a time in Q1 in Hungary last week. So uh, like really, really fall from grace when it comes to a Renault group, which has been in the sport since the 80s, really. They've been really driving around a long time. They know what to do. And to see them fall so far to not even be using their engine anymore is interesting. I don't like Ocon though. I don't think he's a good driver. Um, not because he's not fast, he is, and in fact, he should be a liked driver. He's one of the old guard, like Lewis Hamilton. He is there on merit. He is not a pay driver. He's not from a family of people. Like, these guys sold their house to fuel his F1 career. And he did make it, obviously, but, and he should be liked because of that. He's not Guan Yu Zhou. He's not backed by an entire country. Or like Perez, where he brings $50 million in sponsorship from uh, the Mexican uh, oil cartels. It's not really the same kind of comparison. So he should be like, but he's such a dick. God, he's a dick, especially on track. Off track? Yeah, he says some things, but everybody does. But on track, God, he likes to punish his teammates. In fact, in the off season, I'm looking to do a little bit of a piece on him, um, going over some of his teammates, how hard he fights them, and maybe why he's not the most liked on the grid. I think that's one of, gonna be one of my videos for in the off season that we have. Aside from that, that's all I have from free practice. I'll try to cut this down so it's as short as possible. Thanks for joining me. Subscribe if you're new. Throw me a like if you got a second, and I'll see you guys next time.